Hey everybody and welcome to episode 2 of the game make platform game making tutorial in multimedia fusion. Okay, so last time we left off we had just discussed fast loops and I still have the events in here. But what I did while you weren't looking is I made this whole new background with different segments. See, there's that clothes thing again. With different backgrounds and they're just little segments. 32 by 32 blocks, and you can build any arena or anything you want into them. By holding control, you can drag and create a new object. That's how I made this. Just a quick little nice fact. Alright, so let's get right into the actual game here. This is going to use a lot of fast loops, so I hope you realize what they are now. Uh, if you don't, then you better study that and try to, you know get that worked out because you're not going to be able to follow along very well if you don't know what fast loops are. So you, if you don't understand it, go on to like the Click Team forums or something, which is an excellent resource, and figure that out and then come back and watch this. The reason I'm talking is just filling space while I'm creating this crude face on this block. Just so, I mean, the only purpose to this face is going to be to show which direction the block is facing, honestly. Other than that, it's completely pointless. Alright, so we have block guy there, block guy there, and ta-da, collider. This, is that, this isn't actually going to be the character. What you're going to do, eventually, is make a sprite to cover this, and this is going to be invisible. You're not even going to see this. But this is just to show, like what it'll look like. You know, I actually should have done that, but we'll do that next video. Alright, so let's start with a clean slate. We have no events up here now. We're going to save, and we're going to start. So, we're going to go in here first of all, and we're going to change movement stock to grav. You can't name it gravity because the program won't let you. We're going to name that ORS for horizontal. You know, that, that sounds too much like another word that I don't like, so let's just gonna... We're gonna add an I in there to make it Horiz. Alright, and I think that's all the values we need right now. So, we're gonna start by doing this one. Gravity, this is gonna be the gravity that de determines how much your character is gonna move up or down. When it's different than zero, we're gonna start loop. Remember, you have to name it Grav. And we're going to start it by retrieving this data, the value of gravity times. So if gravity is 1, it's going to do the loop one time. If the gravity is 3, it's going to do the loop three times. Alright. And, uh... See... Alright, I have to remember how to do this. On loop Grav... And, uh, this is not overlapping an object. Backdrop, I mean. Oops, wait. Gotta change these into obstacles real quick. Otherwise, this won't work. Actually, okay. Gonna drag that down. When gravity is greater than zero... Oh, no, you know what? You need to do this. When you go in here, type ABS, and then put this in parentheses. The reason for this is because you can't run a fast loop negative one time. It'll just crash the program. So by doing the ABS, that's the absolute value, and that makes it always positive. So if the gravity is negative one, it's still going to run it one time. Alright, I hope you understand that. And when the gravity is greater than zero, it's going to put your Y position your Y position, whoops, I don't know why I did that, plus one, and then on loop gravity you can do this, when it's lower than zero and you're not overlapping an object, you're going to put your Y to your Y minus one, and, oh, alright, another thing you need to do right now, create a detector, 
for the bottom of your object. What you do is just create the same palette that you did for the block, which is uh, in my case 32 by 32, and you're going to set the hotspot to the same spot, but this just has a one pixel line at the very bottom. And we're going to name that Detector. Just for fun, let's name it Detective. Alright, so what the detector, our detective, is going to do is we're going to always set its position to that thing. And you need to do this after you move it with the loop, because otherwise it's going to have a delay. Like, what it'll do is it'll move this to this object's position. Like, say this object's right here and this is like over here for some reason. It'll move it there, then it'll run the loop and move it however many pixels. So this will be like one frame behind this guy every time if you do it before you move this guy. So always keep it at the end of the loop movement. Alright, so when it's different than zero, it's going to run this loop and do that. Um, okay, what you need to do is if gravity and grav is lower than, say it's maximum speed falling is going to be 6 for now. Uh, we're going to add to the gravity to make him sort of curve down. Not 1 or anything, but let's say 0.25 just for now. See how this works right now. There. He fell. Alright, so... We're going to copy these two events and make the other events for this. And we should probably put these in a group real quick. Gravity. And let's just grab all of these and put it under there. So let's change this to is overlapping an object. Backdrop. And when it's on the grav, it's greater than zero. That means it's going to be moving down, it's going to hit the ground, and on that loop it's going to move it up one pixel so it's not in the ground, but just on it. Then this, the opposite, when it hits the ceiling, it's going to move it down one. And notice what we're going to do here. Actually, I should have done this before. We're going to set gravity to zero on all of these. And that's simple enough. How much time do I have here? Wow, programming takes a long time. Especially because I don't work all that fast. Even though I'm trying to. Alright, so it hits the ceiling. It's going to stop the loop. Wait, what the heck? What am I doing? No. Take it off those, put it only on these. And we're going to stop the loop, gravity. Reason for this is because if the loop kept going, it would uh, mess up some stuff. Alright, so, it hits the ground, it stops the loop. It's always going to be adding that. Let's just make a little control thing right here. We're going to hit fire button 1, we're going to make him jump by setting his gravity to negative 4. Let's just do that real quick. And there we go. You know what I forgot to do? So I forgot to make it so you can only jump when you're on the ground. So let's try this. When detector is overlapping a backdrop, it's going to be able to jump. Now what I should have done actually is set this to his position plus one, because you want that to be in the ground when he is not. See, since he sits on the surface of the ground, he isn't technically overlapping it, so it would be impossible to make him jump even if he was on the ground. But that detector makes it possible to do it. Alright, so that's the gravity for falling. Oh my goodness. This is taking so long. Alright, so that's... I might have to leave it at that, actually. That's pretty sad. Uh, group of events... Horizontal... And I hope I'm not boring you guys by doing this so slow, but I'm really hoping that you're doing this along with me. And that I'm not causing you any trouble. Like I said before, if you whoops, if you are <laughs> having trouble with this, just comment on the video, and I'll hopefully get around to replying to you. And this video's over.
gosh darn it. Alright, so tune in next episode for when we make the horizontal movement and add springs and stuff, hopefully. But until then, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're getting along well in your game making. Feel free to like draw anything. I just drew this little face on him, but draw anything you want. And I'll see you next time. And we'll do more stuff. Alright? Alright. See you then.